So we don't have very many students here. Oh, already pressed. You already started it. Yeah, I just pressed the All button. All right. Well, why don't we just start with questions? Does anybody have any questions? Remember, I have all this chocolate. All right, well, uh, maybe I should just start. Um, it's a shame there aren't more students because the anomalous magnetic moment of the electron is um, probably the nicest, one of the nicest calculations in quantum field theory. And the reason is that you don't really need to renormalize anything. It's a loop calculation that gives you a finite result. It was first done in 1948 by Julian Schwinger, um, and he presented it at an APS conference, I think, in New York. That was when uh, physicists were still paid enough to be able to afford to stay in a hotel in New York City. Um, since then, APS has moved its conference to cheaper places. Um, he also published the calculation as a letter in the Physical Review. It was then, I think, just called a letter, as opposed to Physical Review letters. So last time, we um, showed that the current, matrix elements of the current, this is for spin 1 half, and uh, a state of momentum P spin S, P prime S prime there, that this is I Q over 2 pi cubed, and this is Weinberg normalization, U bar P prime S prime, a structure gamma mu of P prime and P, Q of P and S. And we also saw, I need to use this board for important formulas. So let me just say that U bar of P prime S prime gamma mu of P prime and P U of P and S. We saw that this would take the form U bar of P prime S prime gamma mu f of q squared minus i over 2m p plus p prime mu g of q squared u of p and s, where q here is p minus p prime Okay. All right. We also saw that f of 0 plus g of 0 was 1. We got this from insisting that the, that the spatial integral of j of x, j0 of x, was the charge operator. Charge on the state gave uh, the charge of the state, which was q. And that meant that F0 plus G0 should be 1. And we also showed, and these are both in Weinberg chapter 10 and in my online notes, that mu is the magnetic moment of a spin 1 half particle of, I guess it's charge, or charge Q. What I'm, there's always this, whether it's minus E or plus E, okay? And Q is, to within a minus sign. Okay, so it's Q over 2m f of 0, and that's Q over 2m times 1 minus g of 0. And so you really only need to calculate g of 0, which is the coefficient of p plus p prime mu. And that's the, that's the key point. The, let me just show you what the diagrams are. The diagrams are photon, P, P prime, 
This is the lowest order. And then there are other diagrams, some of which are irrelevant. It's this diagram. That diagram. That diagram. And this diagram. And this, of course, is P minus P prime going out. And uh, we're going to call this K. And so here, this is going to be P minus K. And this is going to be P prime minus K. So K effectively, you're not supposed to draw an arrow on the boson lines, but it helps keeping the thing straight doing this. Of course, you, you don't need to have them to keep them straight, though, because the, what do you do? Because you want to know what, what that one is. All right, anyway. This first is the lowest order diagram. And it gives uh, f of 0 equal to 1 and g of 0 equal to 0 to lowest order. That's simply from this diagram here. This is just, just a gamma mu. So that basically just gives you gamma mu one plus zero. Now, the rest is, since we've got the electron and the, the, the two electrons, this one and that one, are on the mass shell, that is to say P squared is equal to P prime squared is equal to minus M squared, it follows that we can ignore this correction, we can ignore that correction. And that's because of the uh, rule sigma star I m equals zero. This is 10.3.30 in the Weinberg notes. Moreover, we can ignore this one because we're interested not in g of q squared, but we're really only after g of zero. That means that the photon is infinitely soft, it has essentially zero momentum. So this is really P to P, and we keep track of P prime, only keep track of that. Okay, so that means we can ignore this diagram, because um, pi of zero is equal to zero, and that's 10.5. Okay, so, so what we've got then is that um, we only have one diagram. I'm doing the anomalous magnetic moment the electron. Mm -hmm. We saw this last time. We saw that the magnetic moment was this structure here. And we know that gamma takes this form. There are five diagrams, only one is, this one gives the lowest order, that just gives F equal to one, G equal to zero. These three diagrams are irrelevant because everything's on the mass shell. This is the one we can do. Now, dimensional analysis, well, first of all, this diagram, by inspection, it's D fourth K, and at worst, it's 1 over k squared, 1 over k, 1 over k, so it's 1 over k to the 4. So it has a log divergence. The things on the mass shell are for the, the structure functions are evaluated That's at 0? Right. That, it, 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 sigma star on the mass shell is 0, so this term is, is, is right. irrelevant. Pi of 0, 0, and this, because this folk, we're taking p prime, the limit p prime equals p, both of them on the mass shell, so the photon momentum is zero. It's infinitely, infinitely in the infrared. Okay, what? 
Now, to back, back at the, this is the nice part of this calculation. As I said, the thing is logarithmically divergent, this diagram, because it's d fourth k over k squared kk, that's k to the fourth log divergence. But by dimensional analysis, the g isn't really a d fourth k, it's effectively a d cubed k. In other words, there's one k gone because it's a p there. In other words, the log part is the part that's f. f has a log divergence. This just has a gamma, which has no dimension. If this has a p, that means the k's have to be down by one power. So it's converging. That's why I like it. I hate it. And, uh, all right, so let's just do, you apply uh, Weinberg's version of Feynman's rules, and you get p prime p equals integral p of k. Let me take these long distance glasses off. Focused in infinity, the chalkboard is only a little distance. All right, gamma rho, 2 pi to the fourth. So that is um, one of these vertices here. And then Weinberg likes to do this to separate the, the different applications of the fine rules. Minus i over 2 pi to the fourth, minus i, p prime minus k, p prime slash minus k slash plus m over p prime minus k squared plus m squared minus i epsilon. Down the view, minus i over p prime to the four, minus i p slash minus k slash plus m over p minus k squared plus m squared minus i epsilon e gamma rho to pi to the fourth. So that's the other photon. And then the photon propagator is minus i over two pi to the fourth. One over k squared minus i epsilon. Alright, so that's what we've got. That is this diagram here with Feynman rules. Any questions? All right. Well, Feynman had all these tricks. We saw the second order trick last time. This one has three denominators, so we need his double trick. 0 to 1 dx. 0 to x dy. Uh, actually, there's a 2 here. Um, 1 over ay plus b x minus y plus c 1 minus x cubed. Okay. And that means that 1 over p prime minus k squared plus m squared minus i epsilon and one whole, I'm just doing the denominators from there. p minus k squared plus m squared minus i epsilon, one over k squared minus i epsilon. And by the way, we can effectively set p to p prime if we want. Anyway, this, if we're just going for the magnetic moment, Okay, and so this thing is a big denominator, p prime minus k squared plus m squared minus i epsilon, y plus p minus k squared plus m squared minus i epsilon, x minus y plus k squared minus i epsilon times 1 minus x, 
minus three. Okay, so that's what the denominators are. And so we replace the denominators by this integral, and now we have an integral d4 with k, and then dx d1. And so this gamma mu is then equal to pi e squared over 2 pi to the fourth integral 0 to 1 dx 0 to x dy d fourth k gamma rho minus i d prime slash times 1 minus y. Let's see, did I skip something here? Yeah, I skipped something. Let me just say that you can combine all these things. Obviously, you don't leave it like that. This is 2 integral 0 to 1 dx, integral 0 to x dy, and this then is a little bit simpler. It's k minus p prime y. Remember, these are four vectors. Minus p x minus y squared plus m squared x squared plus q squared y x minus y minus i epsilon minus 3. So that's what that thing is. And if we set p equal to p prime, the y dependence actually goes away um, because q, which is um, it's either p, yeah, q is p minus p prime, that's 0. Uh, the p prime, p, the y parts cancel. So this thing really does um, simplify quite a bit. It's, but but if we keep if we keep the p prime and p different for the moment, this is minus k squared minus p slash x minus y plus m bracket gamma mu minus i p slash 1 minus x plus y minus k slash minus p prime slash y plus m gamma rho. So it's all that divided by k squared plus m squared x squared plus q squared y, x minus y, minus i, x, so on, q. Okay, so it's all that. As I said, if we're only going after the magnetic moment, we could simplify, but... And I will in a moment. Okay, so now we do the Wick rotation. We uh, set k0 equal to i, k4. And um, we set kappa squared equal to the sum ki squared from i equal to 1 to 4. So this is a Euclidean momentum. d4 of k is i d4 of kappa. This is, by the way, terrible pedagogy, but since I'm following Weinberg, I I've got to you know, use his notation. It's, it's not a good idea to change variables from k to kappa because it's hard to, for students to see the difference between the k and the kappa. And, um, um, also, we're going to be integrating, well, down here, this is just going to be a kappa squared if we do the Wick rotation. Up here we have k's, and there's a k-squared term, there are k-independent terms, and then there are linear and k-terms. The linear and k-terms are zero simply because, um, uh, just by symmetry, because you, this, is a, this is Euclidean k to the fourth. And um, 
fact, even if we didn't do a wick rotation, we'd still have zero for the linear and k terms. Um, okay. So we do the wick rotation, drop the odd powers of k, so everything is, everything is just kappa squared. That's the only variable. So this thing is then effectively kappa cubed d kappa times the area of the unit sphere in four dimensions. But you did that as a homework problem. Omega d is 2 pi to the d over 2 divided by gamma to the d over 2. And uh, that's 2 pi squared over gamma of 2, which is 1. So this is just 2 pi squared. OK, so all together, this thing is equal to minus 4 pi squared e squared over 2 pi to the fourth integral 0 to 1 dx integral 0 to x dy integral 0 to infinity kappa cubed d kappa now a big parentheses the terms kappa the terms quadratic in kappa just give you kappa squared over 4, effectively. And then they give you gamma rho, gamma sigma, gamma mu, gamma sigma, gamma rho. And this term is irrelevant, actually, for the magnetic moment of the electron. This is the divergent term. And in fact, uh, it contributes to f, but not to g of 0, or even to g. The rest of it is gamma rho times minus i to prime slash 1 minus y minus p slash x minus y plus m gamma mu minus i slash 1 minus x plus y minus p slash y. No, p prime slash y. Plus m gamma rho. And then all this is divided by kappa squared plus m squared x squared plus Q squared y and one minus y cubed. And I'm just wondering. Yeah, if you set P equal to P prime, you see this Y term cancels. And over here, the Y term cancels. So I'm I really should have cut back earlier and simplify things. Um, by the way, this term here comes from the k, k slash k slash term. All right, now there's there are a couple of tricks if you're doing this thing in um, real detail, and that is to say, if you're keeping all the terms, um, you can, the idea is to move the p slashes to the right, because after all, we're interested in gamma between u of p and s, and u bar of p prime s prime. So you move the p slashes to the right and the p prime slashes to the left in order to take advantage of i p slash plus m u of p and s, zero and similarly u bar prime i p prime slash plus m zero. So these two equations simplify things when you get rid of p's. Um, the way you move things to the left and right is you say for example p slash gamma rho is p alpha gamma alpha gamma rho but that's p alpha one minus uh, not one let's see eta alpha rho minus gamma rho gamma alpha, and that is p rho minus uh, gamma rho p slash. 
So you can move a P slash through a gamma rho to get a minus sign and a P rho. Anyway, you do that and then you use these guys and eventually what you find is that you ball prime gamma mu of P prime P U is minus 4 pi squared E squared over 2 pi to the fourth, 0 to 1 dx, 0 x dy, 0 to infinity, kappa q d kappa. And then you've got, after doing these tricks, you've got u bar prime gamma mu minus kappa squared plus 2 m squared x squared minus 4x plus 2 plus 2 q squared y times x minus y plus 1 minus x plus 4i m p prime mu y minus x plus xy plus 4i m p mu x squared minus x1 minus y and all is divided by kappa squared plus m squared x squared plus q squared q being p minus p prime y x minus y q okay all right now i'm finally going to um, go to the set p prime equal to p q equal to zero so things really, really, really simplify at that point. Um, I'm going to go for cosmetic reasons, keep P prime separate from P, just cosmetically. Um, so in general, when you don't do that, what you're doing is calculating corrections to the fermion propagator, right? essentially, right? Perfect. Just the vertex? Well, it's the vertex. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's this diagram. This big is the modified vertex. The modified vertex. So, yeah, it's. Yeah, it's we're, we're doing that diagram. It, we're doing this diagram plus to, to next, to one loop order, we get this. And all the other ones are irrelevant. Let me at least one. Oh, you look down. Nice. Spotted. All right. All right, so now um, I'm going to write it this way. U bar, gamma mu, U, this is it, PP effectively. This is equal to minus e squared over 4 pi squared, 0 to 1 dx, 0 x dy, 0 to infinity, half a cubed d kappa, and then it's u bar gamma mu, and so things are already simple. Somewhat. Minus half squared plus 2m squared x squared minus 4x plus 2. Plus, now I'm going to write this as 4im 1 half p prime plus p mu. Now when you add these coefficients, you see, you got the same coefficient here, 4im, p prime mu, p mu. The p's are, we're taking them equal effectively, so we basically um, average these two terms. And that, that's what the 2 is. And um, that just, they simplify simply to x, x minus 1, u. And, and then Q 
is 0, so this is just kappa squared plus m squared x squared cubed. You notice there's no y at all. So this integral 0 to x dy is really x. And so that's, that's, that is to be compared with the, the, the thing way over there. In fact, let's just maybe swing the camera around just for a second. That's to be compared with this. So the coefficient of gamma mu is f. The coefficient of minus i over 2m p plus p prime mu is g. And we're looking at g of 0. Okay, so that tells us what g of 0 is. g of 0, then, is 2m over minus i minus e squared over 4y squared integral 0 to 1 dx the integral over y is again is just an x integral 0 to infinity kappa cubed d kappa divided by kappa squared plus m squared x squared cubed and then up here we have 2im x 1 minus x And so g of 0 is then m squared e squared over pi squared integral 0 to 1 dx, integral 0 to infinity d kappa, uh, kappa cubed x squared x minus 1 over kappa squared plus m squared x squared cubed. Notice x goes from 0 to 1, so g of 0 is negative. The magnetic moment is 1 minus g of 0, so the magnetic moment, the physical magnetic moment is bigger. Okay, this integral over kappa, I used Wolfram Alpha to do it. You guys know about Wolfram Alpha, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Well, um, well, just Google Wolfram Alpha, and it's basically um, a cheap version of Mathematica. And uh, but it's it has it has the enormous advantage that it's kind of ma Mathematica Googleized. That is to say, if you type simply what you want it to do, it makes the most natural assumptions about what you wrote and does it for you, but says what the assumptions are that made. Whereas if you use if you if you use something, if you use X maple, for example, or maple, you get uh, you get comments saying that well I don't know, it, it depends. I wind up having to Assume such and such is positive, such and such is real, and so on and so forth. And with Wolfram, it just doesn't matter. All right. Anyway, the that's our so to do this integral, one sets u equal to kappa square. Well, I did this part. I did, uh, I suppose I could have given the whole thing Wolfram alpha, but I simplified it so that this is then minus m squared e squared over 2 pi squared integral 0 to 1 dx x squared 1 minus x u du oh, oh this is okay, integral 0 to infinity on the u du u plus m squared x squared cube so Wolfram Alpha did this for me and the, 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 the thing is u du over u plus a squared u zero infinity is very simple. It's one over two a squared. 
really a remarkably simple result. And um, so this thing is then um, minus m squared e squared over 4 pi squared integral 0 to 1 dx uh, x squared 1 minus x over m squared x squared so the x squared is cancel and so this is minus m squared e squared over 4 pi squared integral 0 to 1 dx of simply 1 minus x well, over m squared, so why don't we just cancel the m squared? Uh, and so this is minus e squared over 4 pi squared, x minus x squared over 2, evaluated between 0 and 1. That just gives you minus e squared over 8 pi squared. So that's the answer. Minus e squared over 8 pi squared. Now, of course, we've been in natural units all along. And um, so our answer is the g of 0 is minus e squared over 8 pi squared. Um, and so mu is e over 2m. 1 plus e squared over 8 pi squared because um, it's 1 minus uh, g of 0. Now, alpha is the fine structure constant, and in Weinberg units, that's 1 over 4 pi h bar c, and it's 1 over 137.036, roughly. And um, so this thing is e over 2m, 1 plus 1 over 2 pi, 137.036. And this is e over 2m times 1.001161. And the next digit's a 4, if you care. But there's no point keeping the 4. Well, you can keep the 4, but it only makes sense to keep or when you do the next leading order calculation, the two calculation. Uh, so that's the answer. And um, unfortunately, I didn't, uh, in my notes, I don't have the experimental value, so let me just tell you what that is. So this is what Schwinger got in, by the way, 1948, J. Um, okay, what is the experiment? Um, nuts. Um, Gone off, I think, and done. Um, we're concerned with putting the mu on there. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the experimental result. Um, anybody have a computer here? Yeah, I've got an iPhone. Should ask Wolf from Alpha. Yes. Yeah, I, I, he, he will. Yeah, all right.
shit, it just gives me the alpha over 2 pi. Okay, so what's the... I mean, it, it gave me the result that we just had, yeah. along with the 4. Um, so give me a break. What is the... 2.00231930404. Oh, 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 okay. So, so, so experimentally, it's E over 2M times 1.00116. What's the next one? Is it a 1 or a 2? Well, it's, it's 1 plus that, right? This is, this is just the anomalous part. This is the anomalous part is everything past one. Well, the, the G of the electron should be two, but it's more than two. Oh, nuts. G minus two is an annoying way to do it. This is just um, All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got it. It's, um, here it is. E over 2M, 1.00116. Five nine six. Well, five nine six five two one eight one one one. Um, this is the experimental value with an uncertainty. Jesus God. I yeah, this is incredible. The uncertainty. Let me just write it down. Plus or minus. Zero point, I can't even keep these straight. <laughs> zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. I think it's six more zeros. Um, and what is, let's, so let's see, what is the, what is the, what is the, all right, it's known analytically up to alpha cubed. We've done it up to, I guess, alpha. order alpha. So, so this alpha. is just including higher order diagrams. Right? Yes. But I would not use the adverb just. Just. There's like 900 in the third word calculation. God. All right. And. Oh, wait a minute. It's, it's actually been calculated to alpha fourth. And they finished it? That's, yeah, not analytically. It's, it's apparently right. numerical in some sense. Yeah. Um. I thought alpha cube was in America as well. No, it says analytic. I mean, I don't know. You know I mean, this is Wikipedia. <laughs> but, yeah, I just um, put that there before class. So you're impressed with Google's Google Voice, huh? All right, so this was a big triumph for, I mean, after all, if you want round this thing off, it's 6-0. So, um, uh, so including higher order got 001161. And uh, the correct answer is zero zero one one six all. Um, that's pretty impressive. If you include the higher order things, it matches. This is just second. Uh, yeah, yeah. But if you include the higher order things, how far does it match? It matches the light right here. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's worse on the muon, but it matches the light right there. So the muon is is worse. It's worse. It doesn't match as well. Mm -hmm. All right. And do, do you know why? I don't remember why. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think that, uh, the interesting thing was that the uh, the limiting factor now in our how well we know this at night night moment is how well we actually know the fine structure constant. Mm -hmm. Because we need that to do the analytic computation. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So that's um, that's the magnetic moment of the electron, uh, as I said, done by Schwinger. Back. 48. The, um, the man I knew was in the audience at uh, at the ABS conference, and he said that people burst into applause. Okay, so 
let's let's just see what else um, um, one can say here. Um, one of the reasons that I kept P, P and P prime different from each other and Q different from zero for much of the calculation is um, that uh, well, just to say what. Just to get f of q squared and v of q squared from, for, for other things apart from the magnetic mode and the electron. What you do in that case, you see, what I was able to do here, because I said p equal to p prime, I was able to simplify things easily. What you do at some point here is, um, let's see, where is it? Yeah, I guess it's. with, again, P9 with P prime. So, P bar prime, gamma mu, 
of e prime being u, you get this to be minus 4 pi squared e squared over 2 pi to the fourth, integral 0 to 1 dx, 0 to x dy, 0 to infinity kappa cubed d kappa, and now this is u bar prime gamma mu, and now you've got the kappa squared, which gives you a log divergence, 2m squared x squared minus 4x plus 2 plus 2q squared times y x minus y plus 1 minus x and then minus 2im p plus p prime mu x 1 minus x u and then all of this is divided by half a squared plus m squared x squared plus q squared y x minus y. Okay, so this is the general thing. Now, what you see is that this general thing has the, gen has the form that we determined that it had to have, namely it's gamma mu times something plus p plus p prime mu times something else. This is the g of q squared, this term is the f of q squared. Um, now, if we're, lo if we're looking first at f, well, we have to do something about the, uh, the log divergence due to this term. And what we do is we say, well, does the gamma mu, due to the counter terms um, from, say, L2 is what we call it, it's Z2 minus 1 gamma mu. So this is a first order diagram. It's, it's um, basically, uh, gee, what is it now that I think about it? Um, it's, it's this, but I, I don't know. Maybe we just write it with an X. Anyway, then there's another term namely the vacuum polarization diagram. And this is the one we've essentially already computed. And um, here that is 1 over p prime minus p squared minus i epsilon and then a pi mu nu of p prime minus p times a gamma nu. And well, you remember that what that must be, namely it's um, 1 over p prime minus p squared minus i epsilon, but then this pi mu nu is p prime minus p squared um, eta mu nu minus p prime minus p mu p prime minus p nu times pi of q squared and then gamma nu. And so what does this give you? Well, this gives you a gamma mu times 1. This is p prime minus p squared over p prime minus p squared. And the other term is minus, let me get this straight. Um, I did this actually in my notes, but I forgot to bring those notes in because I, I didn't think we'd get this far in class. So this is p prime minus p nu, and this is p prime slash minus p slash, ah, uh, I remember what happened times pi of q squared, and then this is divided by p prime minus p squared minus i epsilon. Well, but we're putting this between u bar and u, okay? But these, this, this thing cancels between, for on mass shell spinners, okay? Because, because p slash gives i m or minus i m, and p prime slash also gives minus i, plus or minus i, and they cancel. So the, so 
this thing between them just gives us a um, this just wait a second oh gamma mu times pi of q squared I yeah. forgot to multiply by the pi of q squared so we just use this as the correction so finally what we find is that f of q squared is equal to z2 plus pi of q squared this is the finite part plus 4 pi squared e squared over 2 pi to the 4 integral 0 to 1 dx 0 x dy 0 to infinity kappa q d kappa and now this is kappa squared minus 2m squared x squared minus 4x plus 2 minus 2 q squared y x minus y plus 1 minus x and the same denominator that we've seen so many times kappa squared plus m squared x squared plus q squared y x minus y cubed okay so what we've got of course is um, something that's kappa to the minus 6, but then we've got kappa to the 50 kappa, so there is a log divergence, but we cancel that with the z2. Um, moreover, g of q squared is um, minus 4 pi squared e squared over pi to the 4 integral 0 to 1 dx, x dy, 0 infinity kappa cubed. Kappa. This is actually, well, it's obviously finite. 4m squared x minus x is just a little more complicated. Um, divided by kappa squared plus m squared x squared plus q squared y x minus y. Okay, so that, that's a 3. All right, so that's what g is in general, and it's, it's finite because this is kappa q, so it's basically d kappa over kappa q. Um, and so let me just see what the, what the next. All right, so I've done that part. Um, Um, anyway, Weinberg goes on to say, well, what happens if you do the calculation of the magnetic moment of the muon? Well, it's the same thing as for the electron, effectively. It's that correction, the same correction, namely alpha over 2 pi. But he says, well, you can actually do one of the diagrams Actually, I don't know. I mean, it seems to me this is this is one of the fourth order diagrams, and I don't know. And I forget. I forget the all the logic here. Anyway, let me skip this because I. I, I can forget the magnetic the, 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 the what the tricks were here. It isn't all that great actually. In any event, let's get back to this. What is Z2 so that things cancel? Well Z2 is 1 plus e squared over 8 pi squared minus 4 pi squared e squared over pi to the fourth integral 0 to 1 dx 0 to x dy 0 to infinity kappa q d kappa kappa squared minus 2m squared x squared minus 4x plus 2 over kappa squared plus m squared x squared q. The logic here is that um, is that we want um, 
Well, we certainly want f of, well, I guess what we can say is we know we want, we know that f of zero plus g of zero is one. g of zero is finite, and we've already computed it. And so, in fact, that's the, this is minus g of zero, okay? So what we've done is say that the, 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 the rule is that f of zero plus g of zero, which is minus e squared over eight pi, is equal to one. This is f of q squared, and setting q squared equal to zero, we find out what z2 is, and that just gives us this. Once we've got z2, we then stick it in here and we get an expression for f. And um, Okay, we've got three minutes left, so I'll use this lousy blackboard for f. By the way, z2 minus 1, the infinite part is then minus e squared over 8 pi squared, integral d kappa over kappa. Infinity. That's uh, that log divergence. F of q squared then is equal to one plus e squared over eight pi squared plus pi of q squared, the pi of q squared that we calculated a couple of times ago, plus four pi squared e squared over two pi to the fourth zero to one dx zero to x dy zero to infinity kappa cubed to kappa. Wow, all right, this is complicated. Kappa squared minus 2m squared, x squared minus 4x plus 2, minus 2q squared, y, x minus y, plus 1 minus x. Um, this is all over kappa squared plus m squared, x squared plus q squared, y, x minus y, q, and then there's another term which is minus kappa squared minus 2m squared, x squared minus 4x plus 2 over kappa squared plus m squared, x squared, q. All right, so that's the full formula for f. And um, this is now convergent, and um, you can see that because well, the reason it's convergent is that the bad part cancels. Okay, this k squared cancels that k squared. Um, where, when k squared is big because q squared is small. All right, I think that that's enough. I'll, I'll say a couple more things about this next time, but I think we have to go on and do other things. And um, what, what do you guys want to see next? Do you want to, um, with this lattice gauge theory? Yes. Really? Yep. Rather, the, the, the other choice is to um, go into uh, non abelian gauge theory and the renormalization group there. I think we should do both. The question is, which do you want first? <clears throat> what was the second option, or the first option? This lattice gauge theory. Oh, yeah. And I would, I would like to say more generally lattice field theory. In other words, doing approximating ratios of path integrals on a lattice by discretizing space time is, 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 is one thing. The other thing that we have to do is uh, go back to non abelian gauge theory, see how renormalization works for them, and then there's this renormalization theory. Now we can do we can do non abelian gauge theories from lattice, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I vote for lattice stuff uh, first. Yeah. Second. Huh? Second. Two to oh, one. All right. Okay. <laughs>
Not easy. All right, let's do it then. Uh, so you've turned the thing off, I hope.